Hey, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Nicole and this is Devana Lee Design Studio and we are here for Slow Stitching Saturday and we're going to be working some more on the Birdsville cushion. So let's get started. everybody and welcome back to the channel my very first slow stitching Saturday for 2023 thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while we get a little bit work a little bit more work done on Birdsville cushion this is a continuing series for those that are new here uh, where each week I just work a little bit on this particular um, a project there's a few people that are actually doing um, something similar or they grab out some sort of slow stitching whether it be English paper piecing or some sashiko or anything that is done by hand so that is my interpretation of slow stitching okay my slow stitching sat days are centered around needlework such as embroidery wool felt applique English paper piecing and a few other things thrown in for good measure such as sashiko and anything else that I can find so basically as I said this is a continuing series for those that are new here we've been working on this for a few weeks now we have missed a couple of um, slow stitching sat days just through time constraints and whatnot but for the most part we get something going up I have come to a screaming halt on the um, back stitching on the tree because I've actually run out of the floss that I am using there um, and I don't want to switch over to DMC I did try a little bit of DMC and it was so much thinner um, so I've got some um, CXC in the color which is um, 898 in CXC is what I'm using so I've got some more of that on the way um, so I'll be able to continue on with that. So what I thought today what we will do is get some of the leaves that I've already done um, in past episodes and whatnot and um, get some of these leaves down. So that sounds like a plan, yeah? So that's what we're sort of going to do today. So I'm going to spend probably anywhere from um, 30 minutes to an hour with you. We'll have a little bit of a, a whip and chat. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me what you're working on while we were um, crafting together. And um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button while you're there and hit all notifications. And then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. Now, um, as I said, we are working on the Birdsville Cushion by Wendy Williams. I just love this. Um, and I'm, I'm so enjoying doing it and I'm liking the fact that I'm not rushing through it as well. So, um, and I'm hoping that you're enjoying the content and seeing how it all comes together. Um, I know that uh, a friend of mine, we both bought the cushion kit at the same time and uh, she's waiting until I finish the whole thing before she starts her so she can see any problem solving as we're going along. So one of the things that we worked out um, while we were doing the leaves, it says to uh, cut them out and um, and then do the embroidery on them. So you can see here, we've just got a, I think that is called a fly stitch um, on that. And um, it looks really good on leaves and it's, it's perfect for that sort of scenario and um so it said the pattern says to cut them all out now if i have my time over again there is no way that i would be cutting these little things out because as you can see i've got chunky little fingers and it was quite difficult to hold to do that so i would rather trace them all out onto the felt um and um yeah and then just stitch them and then cut them out that would make it so much easier so just bear that in mind if you do end up getting this now i'm not affiliated with wendy wendy williams at all but you can get the um pattern on her website um and you can also get the kit that i got from here in australia from a company called just patchwork uh, they have a website it's just patchwork.com.au you can go and suss it out they've got tons of stuff on there um their customer service is really good i've dealt with them a couple of times now um through like when I've got stuff from cool shows because that's mostly where I go because it's sort of stuff that you like to um, have a look at because they've got something new all the time so it's one of the, the stalls that I always go to when I go to a cool um, conference they're always there so yeah um, and um, yeah so basically this is sort of what it's going to look like in the end now this one here the um, background fabric has red dots on it so that's why it looks super busy mine's not going to look as busy as this um, so yeah, and I thought, well, you know what, we might just, while we're waiting for that brown floss to come, 
Um, and I don't have one that's like I, I've put some colors up against it in, in other shades of brown and you can te definitely tell the difference excuse me to all the difference so I decided just to wait until I get some so I thought as I said I thought we'd put some of these leaves down and get a little bit of color into it so um we also have a giveaway from our last one as well we only had three entries into it so I've popped them um into the bag and we will draw that out a little bit later on so someone will get this cute little um United Stitches embroidery um, in the mail uh, very soon. So I will go back and comment under your comment because you probably, yeah, they might not even be watching this today. All right, so the things that I'm going to be using today are my little applique pins. Oh, and I just threw one on the floor, so I'll get that later. So I have these little pins. They're very, very tiny, um, and they are called applique pins. So I use those for this because they're just small enough and they're not super sharp either. Um, and you can see here that I have a little needle minder um, as well, which I seem to have lost my needle because oh, I want to get that out so I know where it is. My little needle minder today is brought to you by Wombat Hollow Crafts. Um, I had a lovely gift from her and from the lovely Gail and it was a part of that. So I've got that sitting there. Um, which is handy to have because I misplace my needles all the time. The needle that I am using today is a tapestry needle. I find that that is working very well for me and it is a 26 in size. Um, you might be wondering where you can um, get this little pouch from. This is a little pouch that we've made on the channel. Um, I will leave the link up down below and also, also card it up the top where you can make yourself this cute little notions slash needle book um you can see there i've got a little uh needle minder in there as well this one is going to live in here because i am a crafty um yeah so i will leave a link um as i said i will cut it up the top and a link down below um for that now in the advents that i've done before the end of the year i was just leading up to christmas one of the things that i got in the mail was these apple cottage finger savers now these are 12 leather little um stick-ons and um so i thought that i would see how i go using them i don't know if i'm going to whether it's going to hinder me or not but i am going to give it a go now apparently these last for a while like they last for a good chunk of time um, and they're just little circles of leather with a sticky back on it so yeah let's give them a go shall we all right I don't know how weird it's gonna feel on my finger I'm not a fan of the old thimble um, so but apparently these last for quite some time they're reusable so we'll see how we go shall we all right so I'm just gonna go off the picture for now I'm gonna grab my thread snips out I have all my CXE flosses just off to the side of me um, I figured that what we'll do is we'll just go off the picture and do the placement that way um, and I believe that we have to do a whip stitch to put these down now I'm just gonna go and double check um, so bear with me for just a moment um, it says that you can use um, pearl 8 cotton in a variety of colours or you can use two or three strands of um, stranded embroidery thread um, and that's what I'm using I'm not using the pearl 8 because that would I would have like it's a lot of colours to get and I don't use a lot of pearl 8 so I figured well I'll just use what I have um, we've got some birds and all that sort of stuff to um cut out as well which i will end up doing off camera but we're going to start getting into the nitty-gritties of that while we're waiting for this brown to come all right so let me just um get up to where i'm up to and find out uh birds stitch as many parts together before applying to the background flowers and leaves pin the flower motifs to the background um approximately a needle turn the flower motifs to the felt and whip stitch okay so we just need to whip stitch sorry that was me mumbling while reading <laughs> to apologize about that so we're going to be doing whip stitch so that's just that's really basic really really easy all right now let's get our little picture back here and we'll get all our little bits and pieces out of the pattern so that doesn't fall out we'll have that off to the side I've got a side table now which makes it nice and easy to have everything around me and I think this is a good good spot to film up on my bench I sort of have this for my um, stitch with me area so I thought I'd do my um, 
this thing is a bit more it, it's easier for me to keep everything contained and, and within camera view. So hopefully you're getting a really good view on that and the lighting is okay. So I'm just going to sit that there and we're going to start pulling out. Now, one thing I did notice that all her leaves are upside down. So they all go like this. See, I would have thought that, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I thought they'd be a bit closer. Yeah, no, I suppose. Because like leaves normally go like that, don't they? <laughs> like the thicker no yeah yeah they go out like that so I would have thought that they'd be on there like that but we're going to do it how she's got it um I'm going to lay them out first and see if I can live with it because sometimes just sometimes you can't live with stuff but I think that that will look all right what do you reckon oh, make sure I've got them the right way too um I've got a dark green so that was a little bit closer there and it's just going to be me basically playing around with the layout like my tree is not going to be exactly the same as hers and I still have some light green ones that I've got to um put the the um stitching onto so I'm still <laughs> they've got, they were so problematic and there's 72 of these leaves so um they were so problematic that I just didn't want to um do them anymore <laughs> shocker I know all right so I'm thinking that that is looking okay I don't mind the mat like that when I look at the picture it does something it makes me feel like no that's not how it should be I've got a bird that's got to sit here and that obviously he'll place he'll get placed where he can fit um but yeah so I think I'll just slowly put some leaves down but this is looking pretty um swanky already so, and she doesn't have them going right up to the tree so that's going to look so pretty I'm so excited we're up to this part and the next ones that I'm going to do are these um, big circle ones before I do the birds I'll actually do these um, circle ones and um, get them placed down as well so hopefully I'll, I will probably get them cut out over the weekend so they're ready to go for next week and maybe do some stitching on them and, may, and just work this section um, it's going to take a little while but we'll get there what do you think? I'm, I'm liking it leave me a comment down below if you are liking um what you're seeing so far that would be lovely for me to have that comment down there um just get all of there's a lot of red down this end and there's one just in there like so and then there's a lot a, a real pale green so obviously i'm not going to put all the pale greens in oh i could probably put one of these in there instead and just yeah i'll um there's a pale green down here so I'll put that down there and then we've got um, a dark green up here like so and then we've got a little got a little one a little, little tiny green one so this one just sort of needs to come back out here a bit um, that's a good size and that one in like so and some of them are laying down like that so what do you think I'm thinking that's gonna and then the bird will sit around about there roughly and um, yeah we'll get it all placed down all right so the colors that I want to use I want to match these up pretty good so um, let me just have a look at what reds I've got that's a bit dark don't want to no that's not the right color hmm what red did I use on that do you think um maybe yeah I don't know I'm thinking that I might go the darker red around the outside what do you reckon I think 304 is the color that I'm gonna go with all right I'm gonna write that down on the back of my um, I'm just going to put leaves and uh, whip stitch 304. Oh, broke my pencil. <laughs> Red. 
all right that will just remind me what I'm using I don't want to go the same color there because I don't want that to stand out so I want that to stand out but I don't want this one to be overly standing out so I think that that's what I'm going to go with for that one um, I do have to find I've got some threads that are in other projects so I will have to go and find some of those and the same with the dark I think I'll go like as dark as I can for the green all right so at this point I've got two strands of floss off and then I'm going to because I'm pretty happy with the placement so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put an applique pin in to hold these in place so I don't lose my placement and you can see here I've got a little tail sticking out there when it comes time to it I will just tuck that under and I will hide that with um, the whip stitch so and they don't have to be absolutely um, perfect and we have a big circle here and a big circle here and a big circle here so I will um, in, as I said endeavor to get those sorted cut out and some of those stitching at least three of them this week um, if not we'll do some stitching together on it next week um, just depends how my week plays out all right so leave me a comment down below let me know what you're working on um, and we'll get some stitches down together I know that there's a few people that are working on something uh, on a similar project as well and I know that a couple of my followers are also doing some English paper piecing as well on that so the as, as I said um, if you are new here uh, this is an ongoing series and we have been doing this for a while and this is just me I've never done something like this this big so I am bringing you along for the learning journey and uh, we're going to learn some stuff together I guess like um, hopefully and if you've got any tips and tricks I would love to hear them down in um, the comments as I said I am new to this and um I, like I've done little things but not something on this scale so it's super exciting um, oh, to be doing this so I'm looking forward to um, getting it uh, more progress done on it so let me just flip this around and that one was there wasn't it all right over the Christmas break I was you know had had a bit of a break from crafting and whatnot but um I'm still trying to get myself into the flow of things for 2023. I've got some exciting things happening um, as well. I've just got to get over my me being nervous. I was um, I have mentioned it on a couple of videos this week that uh, I am in the process of setting up a Patreon. Um, and whatnot uh, the finer details are getting done but uh, I have this little voice in my head you know just being really annoying and <laughs> giving me lots of reasons why I shouldn't do it <laughs> but anyway all right so as I said we will be just doing whip stitch on these I'm going to start with my red ones um, because that was the easiest floss and I think that's a nice floss and I will just get these threaded and I am using two strands I'm using two strands yes, I did pull two strands off lucky I did <laughs> definitely two strands uh, it's uh, hard because you go from DMC to CXE and CXE is slightly thicker than um, DMC thread and to be honest I actually really like the CXA thread for this sort of thing because it just you can see it it stands out um, being a little bit thicker you don't have to use the three strands the two strands are enough and for finer stuff one strand where it would ask for two strands on um, of DMC it's definitely enough one strand is definitely enough for that all right so I've just tied a knot in that and then basically we are just going to basically do a whip stitch so that's essentially like you're creating a little circle underneath so we're coming up through the the felt and then we're going back down and then we'll come up next to that and we want to get as close to the edge as possible because this is not a feature whip stitch is not the feature um, and you can see albeit 
pretty hard to see see that darker line outlining that leaf just there if I get up a little bit closer um, you probably will see that so you can see there's just like a, there's an outline just around the outside so that's how close we are going to get you can see the little indentations on the green okay that's how close to the edge we're going to get so we just want to catch the edge of the felt that is my understanding of whip stitch that is my understanding of how to do this okay um i'm sure there are many different ways but that's the way that i'm going to be doing it today all right so i'm just going to set that aside because we've got our layout now and i'll move these out of the way and grab my scissors so i can get hold of them and move this oops sorry about that turn my light off because it's a touch one and I'm just going to bring this in a little bit closer for myself um, to grab and basically I am just going to move that pin out of the way hold my thumb there and I'm going to go down and I'm going to go down directly under where I came out so hopefully you can see that okay and I might just lock that screen so it doesn't blur on us there we go got to remember to do that with these ones so if i pull that tight you can see that that has grabbed it and you can only see a tiny little bit of it and that's what we're going to do we're just going to right near the edge but you want to make sure that you are in felt and not into um the little bit that's just going to pull straight through so you can see there that that is secured into and then i'm just going to come down underneath and I'm slightly putting my needle, when I, when I do it, I'm slightly putting the needle underneath the felt so it anchors it down, so it brings it down in, in ways. Now, that's going to be secure. That's going to hold. And you can, can't, can like when you see it there, you can only just make out those little dots. And I've got them, because this is a cushion and it's going to get probably moved around by my family and, and whatnot, I tend to get a little bit overexcited with stitching my stuff down. Um, so, but I won't be having this in a high traffic area. So I'm going to probably do a stitch every maybe eighth of an inch for me, just in case. You could probably get away with doing it a little bit bigger than that. Um, and just play it by ear if you're doing it. Just, just have a look, see if you like it that way. Um, you don't want to have it so things can get up underneath the felt either so you just want to make it so it is secure um i don't mind putting extra stitches in um i just yeah i find that that doesn't bother me at all and you can work from the top so you can see there i've just gone down underneath where i came out and i'm coming up next to it into the felt and you can work from the top you don't necessarily have to have your hand underneath and at this point, I don't even think I need a thimble, to be honest. So I'm going down directly where I come up. I came, came up in the felt and then I'm coming up just next to it and it's about an eighth of an inch. And you can see there that that's just holding that down nicely. It's not going to come up. Nothing will be able to get underneath it. So again, just under where I came out and then I'm just going to stitch that along. And... I am going through to the back and I will get a few more stitches in so you can see it. it will just look like little dots underneath the fabric, uh, like little lines, like you've done a runny st running stitch, not little dots. Okay, let's flip that over and have a look. So you can see there, they're just like little running stitches that I'm doing. Um, the back doesn't really matter because you're not going to see, it's not going to be bulky at all because you are doing... Um, flat stitching so on surface stitching and it's not raised or anything like that but i just find it easier to um work from the top and stitch that down and i'm just going underneath and that's just doing that little whip stitch so you can see there that it's just doing right along the edge and that's holding it down really nicely um I, I don't think I'm going to need this on my finger like I'm not feeling like I need it um, so we might put that away for another time where I'm actually going in and out underneath um, and see if that helps then there's no point in um, using it if I don't really need it at this point um, yeah I'm just not feeling like I need it so I think we're good um, if my fingers start to get sore well then obviously I will um, get it out and So 
So it's almost like when you're doing your whip stitch, it's you're, you're trying to make it as invisible as possible. Okay, so the highlight of the block of the block <laughs> of the leaf is the actual um, fly stitch on top or herringbone stitch. I think it's fly stitch that we used. Where is my thing? Let me just have a look at what we did. No, that's not there. Not in there. <sighs> it has been um, like I'm. It's it's been a little bit awkward this week. Like just trying to get into the swing of things and um, yeah, it's <laughs> like. Um, it's been a bit weird like it, it has been a little bit weird I, I'm so out of practice like you get into a routine of stitching and and doing things and all the rest of it yes that is fly stitch so you can see here it tells you what stitch to put on it and fly stitch um, so and the leaves I oh, here we go I've wrote it here so on the red leaves I used 349 on top and I'm using 304 for the side um, and then lime the lime green which is this one here I am using 470 and then the dark green I used 469 and then for the olive green which is this one I'm using 472 um, and they're all DMC colors but I'm using the CXC threads because they match so you can see here we've got lots of little little bits and pieces that we're going to have to do on the birds and all that sort of stuff so this possibly could go for at least I'm only going to be working on it once a week. I don't really get a chance to work on it um, when I'm away from the camera, so to speak. So this one has been totally worked on on camera and that's sort of the way it's going to continue. So I'm thinking that um, this will probably take a few months. I mean, obviously I'll do cutting out and stuff like that. I mean, you guys don't need to see that, but um, the actual assembly of it, I will um, definitely be doing um, on camera so <coughs> excuse me so when I get to the point I'm going to just put my hand underneath let's get that sitting nice and flat and bring that up a bit and I'm going to just put my thumb nail on that and hopefully I will come up into that point pretty cleanly bit tricky so I've come up in and then I'm just going to go down so that is pretty much the only stitch that we're going to see because I just want to secure that point and then let's see how that's just pulled the point down in there so I'm pretty happy with that and then I'll just come up opposite the second one from that down this side so I'll just come up opposite and then we can turn it around and go back down the other way And I'm, I'm like, let me know in the comments, would you like me to rotate through some projects? Because I've got, um, I've also got my um, English paper piecing mini quilt to do, and I haven't been getting any stitches in that. So if you would like me to rotate through some of what I consider to be slow stitching, uh, just let me know in the comments down below and I can rotate through them. And it might be a good opportunity for me to do that. Um, every now and again anyway just to give me a break from working on the same project because let's face it I have the attention span of a gnat when it comes to um, crafting projects I like to do a lot I like to have a lot of different things on the go I just it's just the way I work now get out of there a white piece of thread where you came from I do not know So did everybody have a wonderful um, Christmas and New Year? I hope you did. We had a really quiet one here. We were lucky enough to have little Em come and visit just before Christmas. Uh, she was here for two weeks and then um, she came back just after Christmas and she was here for another two weeks. So we had a lot of fun. All right, let's go down under there and come up in this one here. 
Oh no, I don't need to because that's where it started. So we've got that sewn on now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave my thread through the back and then back over this side. And I'll just get rid of that little tail as well. Where are my scissors? So snip that out. And get rid of that excess as well. There we go. All right. So now we will move on to the next one. So that's pretty simple, yeah? And you can use that technique for um, a lot of different um, wool applique and whatnot. So there's a couple of kits that I've been... Um, looking at for a while now and um i'm thinking that once i'm finished this one i'll probably get into another one which will be good because i do like um i definitely like doing it um maybe some smaller projects as well maybe some some sort of you know christmas tree skirt or something along those lines so this time i'm actually going to start on the point because i think it'll be easier to start there um and get that anchored in spot. So I can take that pin out now because that's all good. Pop that back in my pin cushion. And I'm just gonna go down, hold that in place. Make sure it's in the right place. And I'm just gonna go down. Now on the picture, none of her leaves, there's a couple of her leaves that sort of touch against the, the branch, but none of them really, really do. So I think I'm just gonna start it that way. That was probably a little bit too big, but I can live with that. And then I'm just going to work my way around until I get back there. I think that will be the easiest way to go. All right. And as I said, you just come up into as close as you can to the edge. And it doesn't matter if you're not super close. Like it, it's, you know, it's all about having some fun and being creative, not getting super pedantic about the stitches and everything because at the end of the day it still looks good anyway as long as you've got your basic techniques down and whatnot you will be okay ah, so we as i said we had a pretty quiet uh christmas and new year we have um i've been spending a lot of time on zoom and stitching with some lovely people we've seen the new year in that way which was absolutely fabulous it was a great way to start the new year stitching in um i've been busy working in the background doing a lot of cross stitch designing um and embroidery designs and yeah just trying to um perfect my um designing and get them all ready for the down the rabbit hole magazine so um and i'm thinking that uh in the coming issues there may be a section in there for a couple of little slow stitching things because it is a needlework magazine so you know we can do a lot of different things um i'm thinking maybe a little wool felt project or something along those lines and um, pop them in the magazine for people as well so you know the more we bring over to the needlework fold the better I say so you can see it's pretty it's a pretty easy stitch to, to do um, the whip stitch and just getting them all sewn down. It's going to look absolutely fabulous as, once it's done. Okay, I can remove that little pin now. Mia played with my pins <laughs> and I'm a little bit particular. See, because this is, these are my needlework pins. So I've got, you know, needles that go into the center and I've got some flat pins and stuff like that. And Mia loves rearranging my pins and I have not had a chance to get them back. Like these pins aren't even supposed to be in there. These are like fabric pins where, for bolts of fabric um, when I pin them up. So these big ones aren't even supposed to be in here. Um, and I have my fork pins in here for when I'm patchworking and stuff like that. And I've got a counting pin and they're normally in their little sections and she messes them up every time <laughs> and I haven't bothered to fix them up. 
um, yeah, and you know, like they get f stuff all over them as well. So yeah. Anyway, that's just me being a little bit. See, I've got applique pins in, and they're all mixed up with my longer pins. These are just my regular glass head pins. So these ones I use for patchworking and whatnot. These I use for um, patchworking as well when I'm nesting seams. So yeah, so she gets in and she moves them all around, and then these little applique pins. They're not as sharp as the other ones, so they are um, a lot better to use for. Um, applique and whatnot and not stabbing myself as much and especially when you've got a lot of pins in um and you've got them all stuck in for your um for your applique that's why i was doing that i was moving it so i can put my applique pins all in one spot so yeah put them back where they were so i have little the little quadrants in and there's a you can find where to um to make these little round pin cushions on the channel i'll leave a link up down below for you and you can go and suss that out but um yeah so basically i like to have my applique pins so i can just access them really easily and um yeah but no, no, she likes to mess them up <laughs> um and like she's taken some of my glass head pins like i had eight of these glass head pins these are tulip pins and like they're really long and they're good and now i've only got three left she took off with them she was pinning stuff and yeah i don't know where they ended up so anyway it is what it is um yeah so i'm hoping to um get a lot more done on this i just lost my train of thought what i was talking about but anyway super easy to do this i'm loving it oh that's right i was talking about the magazine so I'm, I'm looking to expand um a little bit more into um the magazine and whatnot with uh what is available um so yeah so having you know maybe some sashiko patterns in there along with um go back down along with you know some candle wicking and all that sort of stuff all right so i'm just going to gently go under these and stitch that down and then i'll come back and just catch that there and that secures it and then we'll snip off and go to the next one so there we go look at that we're getting some color it's a bit better than just looking at brown all the time right <laughs> and it was a lot easier to start on that point than trying to navigate that so i'm going to continue doing that so there's a little tip for you just to start on the um on the point so it's easier to come up on that point to begin with and doing just a little bit of a longer stitch to secure that in place like so and then coming up just a little ways down the side and you're good to go Let's spin that around a bit I mean normally I would have this in my lap and you know I'd be stitching it I wouldn't have to worry about which way it's going I can yeah but on camera because i'm having it out in front of me it makes it a little bit tricky and whatnot uh, all right so what has been happening in my day-to-day -day grind i have been slowly but surely organizing my workspace it still does not look like i've organized my workspace so i'm probably going to have to it's going to be a bit of a work in progress um I am back to regular filming now which is great uh, that means that we've got something going up every single day except for Tuesdays I haven't filled that gap and I'm thinking that I might end up just once a month doing a um, trash to treasure on a Tuesday so trash to treasure treasure Tuesdays and that is where I go off to a second hand shop and we'll find something that someone's thrown away we get to donate to charity while we're doing it and we will be creating something gorgeous so i've got a couple of little um project ideas there um in the back of my mind so um i will think i might end up doing them on a tuesday um if not we'll do them on a wednesday or something as a tutorial just depends what it is if it's a sewing 
item or whatnot. So yeah. So I've got a few, as I said, a few ideas for that. So I'm thinking that that is the day it's going to go up, and then that means that I have a video going up every single day. And we have like stitch with me on Monday. Wednesday is our this year we've got a um, quilt quilt block challenge happening. So it's the A to Z quilt block challenge. We did it last year, but I didn't end up doing a series of videos. This year I'm doing a series of videos. So that comes out every two weeks and that'll get us through the year um, and then <coughs> the other Wednesday the following Wednesday in between that will be a sewing tutorial so we this year have started doing um, some basic bag um, making so the first video we did we made a wallet uh, the second video we did we made a um, that did not go in there then I pulled out I just didn't get close enough to it so I'll just come back and do that it's just um yeah it wasn't in it pulled through the the felt so I must have been right on the edge um yeah so I made a handbag the other day and we've done two of our blocks so far so it's been a busy month already for um for the channel but it's now about to get busier again so um, which is good because that keeps keeps you entertained and it keeps me um, busy. I like being, you know, having busy hands, getting lots of stuff done. As I said, this will be going up on a Saturday, and then we've got Floss Tube Friday, and we have a live stream now every Thursday where I'm working on some of my quilt kits that I have here that you know really shouldn't be sitting on the shelf anymore. They just need to get done. And so that's what we're doing with that. We are um, basically we are doing that every Thursday and we spend anywhere from two to three hours together and we are just basically working our way through the quilt and we are working at the moment um, myself and a couple of other people are actually working on Among the Stars again. It was a fat quarter shop uh, a pattern that they brought out as a block of the month and so I got the block of the month from them including the fabric and um yeah and I'm getting it done so it will be all sorted and it's getting we have just done block six this week so it is getting pretty close next week we're up to I think that was the last of the large blocks um for the cent the quilt center and uh, next week we've got um block seven and there's six blocks all together for that but they are only small i think they're eight and a half inches from memory and then week eight is when we start for the finishing border um and so i'm just working my way through it so each week we are doing a section out of the quilt so hopefully um we will have that finished very soon so we'll, we're almost up to the final assembly of it um and it's just a way for us to connect and it's a live stream and so it's a bit of a um, little bit of a crafting party at times we have lots of lovelies in the comments commenting and having jokes with one another and getting some I don't know how much craft they're getting done <laughs> but I know that some use it for you know a stitching time they settle in and have their cuppa and morning tea and um, they settle in for a few hours of doing some crafting together, which is absolutely fabulous. If that's how they are getting their stitches done, that's fine by me. Um, others work on English paper piecing while they're doing it. Um, some work on actual the quilt that um, I'm working on as well. So it gets to be quite a productive morning. It's just sort of like a virtual crafty get together. And um, as I said, we've got some lovely ladies that um, and gentlemen that join us and we just have a really good time. So if that's something that you're interested in, don't forget to head over to our homepage on the channel. And on the homepage at the top, I have upcoming lives um, playlist there. And so you will see ones that have already played for so the month of January. They once we click over to February, they'll get moved out and then it'll be all the February up and comings and replays you will find there. Um, then once, if you want to see what we worked on during the month of January, they will be in the, um, 
I'm thinking that I'm just going to put them in the how to make um, no not the how to make in um, oh, I've got a playlist on there and I cannot think of the name of it right now and I've just drawn a total blank I think it's actually called live replays um, but anyway you can find all our lives now that um, YouTube has done a bit of an upgrade on their um, pay on the home page if you look up underneath the channel art there is the home page videos live streams shorts and playlists or something along those lines I don't know what order they're in but that's what's up there now and then you've got community and the about page so um, basically if you go um, to the live stream where it says lives you'll find every live stream that I've ever done there um, so they've organized it a little bit better for us so you don't have to scroll through tons of content now I've got over 700 videos on my channel um, so you know that's a lot of scrolling through to find a particular one now you can just go in and because I'm doing these series you can it'll have you know um, it'll be crafting with DDs episode whatever it is but part six for instance yes um, the other day's video which was Thursday's video not yesterday um, uh, Thursday's video basically it is part six because it's block six so whenever I start something new it will be in its parts until I'm done it I have, have completely done it and it's finished um, so yeah that is the plan for that and that will be the same on here as well so basically you'll have you know episode whatever part da 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 of Wolfell applique and then that way you will be able to easily find what you're looking for and some of you may have noticed that my thumbnails are changed I tend to like to change um, let's see if I can do some thread chicken with this what do you reckon I should be able to use a bit of this for that next one so basically what I generally what I do each year is I end up changing my thumbnails slightly so they still have the pink or they might be gradient in color um, I will change something on the thumbnail outline something a bit darker so this year you can see the thumbnail like if you have a look at thumbnails they are um, a lot different than last year last year I had a plain pink background and a big circle um, with what the video was and what the episode was this year I've got like a wave coming down one side and it'll have what the video is on that pinkish blue purple um, I have a slightly different one for the um, for the quilt block challenge it's a light pink um, and the, all the rest are like a, a gradient purple um, I'm leaving the light pink one there because that's what I started with um, I've gone to a bit of a darker pink now more purple um, looking so yeah so you'll see that that they have changed um, a little bit and I like to do that every year because that makes it easy for me um, when I'm searching for something for what year I need to look in and um, I have a little note here going okay it is thumbnail light pink let's say big circle so I know that that was 2022 this year gradient to the side um, ripped paper looking it looks like for the thumbnail so I can go okay well that's what I've done in 2023 um, and I just find that easier for myself I don't do it for any other reason than making it easy for myself but at the same time it also makes it easy for you to know what is a especially when um, I'm being pushed out in the algorithm and um, you're getting a lot of recommend recommendations you'll know that um, anything with that new gradient pinkish purple and blue in it is for 2023 anything with a large white circle on it is for 2022 so it makes it a little bit easier for you especially when we are working on the same pro um, project because the thumbnails are very similar um, also you want to look for what part it is what episode it is um, and you know you can also save them to your own playlist as well so that's also an option you can just um, um, save it to your own little um, playlist and then that way you can find it easily on your own account you don't necessarily have to come to my account then because you'll have that playlist there and honestly I recommend that you do that to make it super easy for yourself to find projects again um, name them uh, 
you know whatever you want you can even just save my whole playlist for slow stitching Saturday because there is a playlist for that as well so that's another option as well um, because YouTube is um, making it a lot easier to find content from your favorite designers now which is great it's 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 also great for me it makes it a lot easier when I come to the home page like if someone's looking for something um, I can direct them easier like a lot, a lot easier and also if you're on a laptop I don't it doesn't work on a um, mobile phone but if you're on a laptop and you come to my channel and you're looking for let's say you're looking for this okay if you put in um, across the top there next to the about um, page tab there is a little magnifying glass there and you can put in English paper piecing Okay, and it will search my entire channel for you and bring up all the videos that has English paper piecing in it. So a lot of people don't use that feature and it is great. I use it with some of my favorite, um, uh, especially my favorite floss tubers and stuff like that. When I, I take notes, I've got a book and I take notes on different charts that they've talked about and you know different techniques or um, products and stuff like that. And a lot of time I look at those because it gives me information about different products and tools to use and stuff like that and I learn a lot from other floss tubers as well because like I'm re relatively new to the world of cross stitch um, and different techniques and, and all that sort of stuff so I have a essentially like a little diary and I just take little notes in that and um, I will you know say it was on I might not necessarily put down the um, episode excuse me Although I do try to do that, and um, and basically I'll just take notes and, and and whatnot, and I might put, you know, for instance, say I was watching Country Stitches, um, they have a lot of floss tubes on their channel and floss tube extras and stuff like that. So I will have made a note about a particular product, and I may have missed down, like I've written down, seen it on Country Stitches, but I've forgotten to put what episode or whatever. I can go to their channel go to the um to their home page and up the top underneath the channel art which is the banner that goes across the top and telling you what channel it is um there's that little search button next to the um to the about tab and that makes it easy because i can put in um what i'm looking for on their channel and they're pretty good they like they put information down underneath their video so the um search engine on YouTube uses that information to help guide you to the video that you're wanting to find um, and even like if I've got the episode marked down instead of trying to scroll through so say it was a episode that I seen on you know two years ago and it was episode 30 whatever I can go to that instead of putting it in the top the normal search bar and it searches across the the platform I can go to their channel and I can put in um, episode floss tube episode da 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 and that will bring it will bring that up so it's a really good um, good way to get the information you need from any particular channel um, it's it's very very key for sewing channels so that doesn't matter what channel you go to that will be there all right we need to pick a green all right let me you hear my squeaky chair it's all squeaky again it wasn't a couple of days ago <laughs> all right let me i'm thinking that i'm gonna go with 895 because that is quite a dark green i'm thinking 895 so let me write that down dark green 895 all right we've got that written down i have to swap my glasses out because i use magnifiers for my stitching it just makes my life easier and me less tired all right pop that in there working in the yard yesterday and I wrecked my nails and I wrecked my fingers and I'm like mm, should have wore gloves didn't have any here though had to get some stuff done 
So I'm going to, after doing this video today, I'm going to spend some TLC time on my hands. I'm going to do a nice moisturizing treatment. And all that is, is I just slather my hands with um, coconut oil. I do a scrub first. And um, I do a sugar and lemon scrub. And then what I do is I, let me just... bit better and then what I do is I um, okay this is not working for me this thread is a little bit fluffy because sometimes that happens with these threads but still I really like the look of them so I'm just going to try and thread one and double it over sometimes when it's a bit fluffy it um can be a bit problematic to thread up but I am not opposed to threading my needle more often than not so that's all good um yeah so I do a sugar and lemon scrub so what the sugar does is it exfoliates and then the lemon actually gets rid of any like smells especially if you've done like you've been cooking with onion and stuff like that it's brilliant to get rid of the smell um so I do that and then I slather my hands in coconut oil and because I have really dry hands and even just from stitching um, I get like little dry patches so you can see there I get dry patches um, from the needles so um, I try to do a bit of a treatment on my hands and so I just slather them in coconut oil just use stuff that I've got in the pantry and then I have a pair of cotton gloves that I put on um, that I just yeah I wear when I'm um, doing the treatment I'll leave that on for about half an hour I just sit there watch a bit of TV do something like that you know and um, yeah and then I just wash it off at the end what happened there oh, that's what happened it didn't go all the way through oh I hate it when that happens let me just unpick this now because I've crossed over it it won't slide through but if I lift the threads up I can bring that a bit closer and then I can pull that down into a knot there we go right <laughs> okay that was a bit of a mischief wasn't it all right let me just get this to come up and then we can spin that around yeah so I'm going to do that after I do this video and um, yeah spend a little bit of time might even do a little bit of um, just closing my eyes and meditating I sometimes do that and just sit there with my hands on my lap in their gloves and yeah they're a little bit dry at the moment and as I said I went out into the yard and I didn't have gloves and yeah bad move <laughs> But anyway, you get that on some of these big jobs. All right. So that's pretty good progress for today. I think like we've got one, two, five leaves stitched down. We've done a lot of talking and I'm going to um, get this one done. But that's pretty good progress for this week. So if I can get a lot more of the... Um, leaves done hopefully the brown floss will turn up sooner rather than later and um yeah we can get that finished down and then i won't have to worry about all these pins and it all just flapping around in the wind i i do have several packs here for um of the um cxc but i have used a lot of the brown um um, for projects and stuff like that out of the three packs so I actually just all I ordered was that particular brown because I like it for trees I like uh, I actually really like that um, that brown it's it's just a nice shade of brown
So hopefully today I have inspired you to maybe start, if you're new here, to start a wool felt project. It's such a lovely medium for applique. Um, as I said, I'm, I'm very new to it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it and looking forward to getting this done and, and being able to display it. Um, I just, I find that I find it a lot easier if I just do this on camera and get it done I'm getting more progress done whereas if I'm working in the studio and I think oh I should work on that chances are I'm not going to get to it you know I'll put it off and whatnot whereas if I'm obligated to share it with you guys then it's getting done and I'm happy with that yeah and sometimes on the weekend I'll pull it out pull things out and I'll put some stitches into stuff and then put it away again but this way at least with these projects I'm actually getting them done so again we'll just weave that and that's all we, we really do with the finishing I just weave it into the back um, when this is completely finished I will actually put a cotton interfacing on this um, to protect the stitches that is a fusible one um, it's an acid free uh, it's Shayflex 101 is the one I use I use it in in pretty much all of my um, finishing and handbag making and anything to do like even with my um, own personal stitching when I'm finishing them off I will um, I will actually put the interfacing on the back and it just holds all the stitches down and I find that that um, is a really good product to use because it never fails me it's the same every time um, you know the quality is there it's a Pellon product so you know that the the name is a good name um, and it's cotton as well and acid free so it's not going to make your stitches be um, like weaken over time or eat through them and destroy the the piece it is acid free and that's what you want um i've been using it for years i've got bags that i made eight years ago and they're still they're fine they're they're perfectly fine um yeah so that's what will go on to the back of this once i'm finished doing all the stitching and what that does too because it's fusible it fuses down and it locks everything in the place which means <clears throat> that if someone with little fingers sits there and tries to start picking at stuff it's going to make it a lot dip more difficult for her to do that not that she does that that much these days but you just never know if the mood's going to strike her to do it <laughs> So I've got Savannah coming to, to visit today. She's um, arriving a bit later today. Um, so next week I'll have a bit of an update for you on what's going on with her and whatnot. Because um, some of you might not know, she's actually moved out of home to start uni next month. So she's now living a few hours away. Um, <clears throat> she's been gone for uh, just on two weeks and she's coming home for the weekend because I think she realizes that she's going to get incredibly busy in the next couple of weeks and um, yeah and she's missing home a little bit so she's coming home and um, I'm gonna cook her favorite meal which is spaghetti bolognese um, that's so she loves my spaghetti bolognese she goes if she makes it to the recipe she goes it doesn't taste the same as yours mum that's because I said I said don't take this the wrong way I said it's because you made it it's not because you're bad at it it's just because you made it it's the same as me I don't enjoy the stuff that I cook because I made it <laughs> and she goes oh yeah I guess that makes sense everything always tastes better when someone else makes it I said yeah because cooking is a chore like no one like unless you're very passionate about cooking a lot of people see it as a chore I do love to cook um and um yeah, and the, my my spaghetti recipe um, has been adapted from my nonna's uh, recipe because I don't make my own sauce at this point. But when I was out on the farm, I was making my own sauce the same way as na uh, nonna did it. I use um, stuff that is readily available at the supermarket and um, whatnot. So it's adapted and 
um, from that. But if I'm growing tomatoes or vegetables and stuff um, in the garden, I de tend to make my own um, pasta sauce then. And um, yeah, so, um, but we've adapted it from Nuna's original one to what it is today. And um, she really likes it. So I thought I'll make that for her. And there'll be leftover sauce so I can make her a couple of lasagnas to take home or she can take the spaghetti sauce home with her. Um, that, so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing her because like, I do miss her. Very, very much so. But we're not going to think about it because I've done well so far. I haven't cried. Because this is just new and exciting stuff. This is new it's not that she's leaving me forever it's just new and exciting it's the, the start of her life and i'm super excited for her like really excited for her all right well we've been stitching for an hour that is looking absolutely fabulous what do you think guys leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think i'm thinking it's going to look absolutely divine when it's done and i'm so glad so glad that i didn't have this fabric because I think that that would just be too busy. This is just going to make it really highlight. Now, before we go, we're going to draw the names. Now, there was three people that entered, and I've just written their names on the pieces of paper, and I had this bag, and I put it in there. So let me just draw one out, and let's find out who the winner is for the United Nations stitch. This is a little, ah, look at that. Elena K. Um, Elena, I will comment on your comment under our last Slow Stitching Saturday and let you know that you have won that. So I'm just going to open this up and pop your name in there so I know that that is yours. And I am going to... I Slip that in there. Let's get that in there and put that aside and I can get rid of those names out of there now. All right. Pop them in the bin. So they're done. And I am going to call it a day. I, have, I haven't got a giveaway for this one, but I will have a giveaway next week. Um, I'm just getting a few um, stitching related, slow stitching related um, things together uh, for the giveaways. All right, so this week, basically, um, I would just really like your feedback on what, what you want to see. Do you want me to um, rotate through my size stitching or would you prefer to just see this from beginning to end um, and get it done? And then that way, if you're working on something like this, you can stitch along with me each week as well. But as I said, that is it for me today. If you ha are new here and you've yet to subscribe and you've made it this far, make sure that you leave me an emoji um, waving symbol down in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe and change the bell icon to all notifications and then that way you are not going to miss out on every any of my 2023 crafting adventures so that is it for me today have a wonderful day everybody don't forget to give me a thumbs up and i will see you in the next video bye for now